We bless the Lord on tonight, and we are in for a treat. So as we bring our minds in and just put our minds on the Lord, we are expecting, we are in expectancy of what God will do for us on here on tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Evangelist Donna Walker is coming with our prayer, followed by the scripture, uh, Evangelist Roberta Snurling. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Will you please stand as we go to God in prayer? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless, Lord. Bless, Lord. Let your anointing 
permeate this place. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. And we'll give you glory. And we give you honor. And we give you praise. 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 Give you praise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Have thine own way. In the name of Jesus. Bless our pastor on tonight. Hallelujah. Give him rest. Restore him. In the name of Jesus. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 God, our scripture will be coming from Isaiah 53. He, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and he was esteemed him not. Surely he had bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded <clears throat> for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chestnut of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God is blessed. Come on, somebody continue to open up your mouth and give our God a praise. Come on, come on. Somebody stir up your praise. Somebody stir up your gift. Somebody open up your mouth and begin to speak well of the name of Jesus. Come on, anybody got a Sunday night praise? Somebody open up your mouth and say, God, I will bless you. I will honor you. You are worthy to be praised. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving, What did you come to do? What did you come to do? Tell somebody I came to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, don't waste your time looking at me. But you better open up your mouth and let the Lord know I'm here because I need a healing. I'm here because I feel breakthrough. I'm here because I know God's got something better for me. I'm here because I'm ready to go higher. Anybody ready to go higher? Come on, come on. It's in the atmosphere tonight. But whatever you need from the Lord, it's your responsibility to lift up your hands. Open up your mouth. Shout out to God with a voice of joy. Him who has been redeemed by the hand of the enemy. Why don't you say so? I won't let the rocks cry out for me. But I shout out to God. Woo. Come on, somebody put your hand together. Let's give God a praise. Isn't he worthy? Come on, isn't he worthy? Come on, why don't you look at your neighbor real quick and let them know you look good tonight. I'm glad that you're here, but I really didn't come to see what you have on. I really didn't come and talk to you tonight. I came to get something from the Lord. So put your hand together, come on. Come on, I feel the joy of the Lord tonight. Yeah. Come on, we can sing this one together. Say, hallelujah.
you're glad to be in the house of the Lord again. I know you're standing because this is the day that the Lord has made and you are rejoicing and you are glad in it. When I was up there, I just thought about it. I haven't been in this place in church since March of 2020. Every time I come to this church, since March of 2020, I'm attending a funeral. I'm attending a funeral. I'm not here tonight for a funeral. I'm here for a night of healing and deliverance. in the house of God. And I know a lot of you are tired of people talking about COVID. I know, but you know what? When you've been through something and you survive, when you're a survivor, 
to take every opportunity to testify of the goodness of God. For he has been good to me. He has set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've heard me share. you Jesus but I must share we had such a good time this morning I really wanted to be straightened out did anybody else want to be straightened out thank God for straightening me out hallelujah and we rejoice thank you women for joining us tonight I know it's been a while I know it's been storming. I know there are quite a few that do not have power, but you made a sacrifice and you came out to be with us this evening. And we are grateful. I am going to pause for a moment, a period where you can be blessed, where we share in the spirit of giving our offering. And we know here at Temple of Deliverance, we give differently. And some of you, this is your first time giving in this location. But we are going to use our methods of giving that we do in the main sanctuary. That is, and for those of you that are online that are viewing by live stream, you can go to todkojic.org and you can give via PayPal, Giblify, you may have your own PayPal account. There are telephone numbers that I believe that are on the screen that you can call in, that you can pay by credit card number verbally, and then we will accommodate the old-fashioned givers that like to have an envelope and put their membership number on the envelope. If you would like an envelope to share in giving, Please elevate your hands at this time, and someone will bring you an envelope. Thank God for this great artist. Praise God. I believe it is Anisha. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Figaro Cooper from Brooklyn, New York. We hear your song, Blessed, quite a bit here at 95.7. We thank God for a holy one, and I know I've heard your song. I believe it is not broken, not forgotten. Not forgotten. Yes. yes. Thank you for coming to share with us. Okay, we are going to stand. Praise God. And I'm going to ask Evangelist Linda Brown to come and bless this offering for us. We're going to stand, the ushers are giving you, and you're going to hold on to your offering envelope until exiting. Yes. If you have on your persons, please share with us an offering of $25. If you do not, give the best that you have. Do not forget about text to give. I'm sure that you, a lot of you have that number in your telephone. Once again, what I always say, we're not given to be seen, but we want God to see us given. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The text to give telephone number is, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you that do not have it because you cannot see it online, it is 901 Thank you, Jesus. 479-1191. 901-479-1191. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, J
1191. I'm going to ask you to please stand all over the audience. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessing of your offering. Raise your gifts, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Now, Father, I ask that you bless those, some 60, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. In the Jesus' name, amen. Are ready to receive this great woman of God, Dr. Valerie Moore, who has been prophesying since the tender age of two years old and preaching since the young age of 19. Dr. Val is intentional about her mandate and the calling upon her life. She shares her God-inspired wisdom with the world, compelling others to live in, in, in abundance, unlocking the prophetic, prophetic mantle on her life. By the age of 25, she walks in a level of spiritual authority and boldness that cannot be shaken. As a member and spiritual advisor to many, she travels, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, across the country, teaching, preaching, and prophesying to those who are receptive to what thus says the Lord. Hallelujah. Breaking down barriers and denominational boundaries, she offers hope and healing to the despondent and broken. As the founder and CEO of Valerie Moore Enterprises, she is best known for providing transformational change as she encourages others to commit to a life dedicated to the things of God. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you saw her visual introduction this morning at service. And you came back because you knew that God had given her something for you. Our guest artist, Anisha Figaro Cooper, is going to come back with her sermonic solo when she has completed. Please rise to your feet to receive this dynamic woman of God. Praise God for the word. Praise God for the ministry of song. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Come on, if you're physically able, let's stand to our feet as we prepare our hearts to receive the word of the Lord. Anybody excited to be in the presence of the Lord today? Come on, somebody just lift up your voice. I feel the spirit of deliverance and the spirit of healing in the house. So can we just lift up our worship? Somebody just open up your mouth. Just begin to let the sound of your worship fill the air. Come on, let heaven hear you. God, we honor you. We magnify you and we pour ourselves out on you. God, we open up our hearts and we open up our spirits because we need a new feeling from you. Come on, come on, fill us with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that helps us to love helps us to understand, helps us to receive your word. Come on, somebody lift up a sound. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on through your mask. 
open up your mouth and just begin to worship our God. His goodness never runs out. His mercy and his favor never runs dry. Come on, come on. Somebody thank him for his faithfulness. Somebody thank him for his promise. We worship you, Jesus. We set an atmosphere for healing. We set an atmosphere for your breakthrough. We set an atmosphere for you to move. God, we want to feel your presence. God, fill us with your glory. Fill us with your glory. Fill us with your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. His goodness never fails. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. Yes, Lord. In all my days, I've been held in your hands. Come on, somebody thank him. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, somebody sing it out. Oh, my life, you have been faithful. Come on, if you know that, somebody just worship him because all my life, you have been so, so good. Hallelujah. And with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, somebody just lift up your voice and begin to worship him. He's worthy of the glory. Yes, he is. He's worthy of the honor. Yes, he is. Oh, come on, let's say I love your voice. I love your voice. Come on, say you have led me through. You have led me Come on, in darkest night. In darkest night. Come on, tell him. You are close like no other. Come on, and I know you as a father. I know you as a father. I know you as a friend. I know you as a friend. And I have lived, I have lived in the goodness of God. Hey, hey. All my life you have been. Come on, somebody just worship our King. Say, oh. Your goodness, your goodness is running there. It's running, it's 
Come on, somebody open your mouth and give the Lord a shout. Come on. You can't shout with your hands. I said open your mouth and give the Lord a shout. Come on. I said open your mouth and give the Lord a shout. I thought this was a praise in church. I said open your mouth. If you got breath in your kedeveshia, if you got breath in your body, come on, open your mouth. And shout until the walls shake. Come on. Come on. Open your mouth. I'm just trying to find the section I'm going to preach to tonight. Come on. Open your mouth. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on. I said let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I said let the redeemed. 
I said, let the redeem of the Lord. Look down your row. I know we got on masks and, and what have you, but I want you to look down your row and slap a good neighbor. Let, let, me, let me do the right thing before we do the wrong thing. Can we just shout real loud for Sister Figueroa Cooper? Come on. Come on, that's my sister for real. Open your mouth. Shout real loud. And I want you to do real, real good for the anointed shepherd, beautiful first lady of this house. Come on. We honor God. Come on, do better than what you're doing. Come on, do better than what you're doing. Shout loud. Shout loud. I am a firm believer that what you do not honor will exit your life. I said what you do not honor will exit your life. And can you thank God for the chief priest of this house? Come on. Come on. Clap real, 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 real loud. Now look down your row and tell your neighbor, I'm so glad to see you. And if you lied to that neighbor, tell another neighbor, I'm really glad to see you. Now I want you to prophesy to a neighbor behind you, beside you, in front of you, wherever you feel comfortable. Look him in the face and say, neighbor, before the night is over, God is going to bless you with what you did not know you needed. If they don't shout, huh, if they don't shout, you're sitting beside the wrong neighbor. I said, look at that little bit I said, look at somebody and say, neighbor, God is about to bless you with what you did not know you needed. Come on. I said, look at three people and tell them he's getting, Jesus is on the main line. This is a good time to tell them what you want. This is a good time. I thought this was a delivery. I thought it was... I bring you greetings. All the Haya Taban City, the Kitty, the Boshia. I bring you greetings all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina. Nibesia Namahan, the Kitty, the Boshia. Zoda Voko de Vedi de Besia, Tabanda de Bashi de Ba Zukunda Vekadaban City, Vekandrish de Vekadabas City, Vedi de Osha Lose de Vekandi de Boshi at a man said of it Tasca Tata de Bosete, Sata Santia de Bacatahata, Yadabata. I was in my room today and uh, Tomorrow's my birthday, so my staff brought me some birthday presents to my room. And um, you would have danced if you knew that I shouldn't be living to see tomorrow. <laughs> had the enemy had it his way, the suicide would have worked. This side ain't never had no problems. Let me talk to this side. But man of God, I looked out the window and um, it was daylight, but it was dark. It, it was daylight outside, but it was dark. So I went and I sat back on my bed and I looked again because even my staff, when they was in my room, what time is it? It was like three something. And they said, why does it feel like it's the evening time. I looked out the window again, and I knew immediately that God was trying to talk. 
If I be a prophet of God, last time I was here, I prophesied something, and it wasn't a week, of, I think it was a Pastor Heaps church, and it wasn't a week or two later that the prophecy came to pass. It, it, I said I seen blood in the streets, and I seen them in the streets of Memphis. I looked out the window, and it was dark. And I saw all of a sudden in my spirit, I heard winds and I saw trees falling, cars flipping. And I said, God, what is that? He said, a storm is coming, but y'all can praise it out. I, don't I heard it, Holy Ghost, a storm was coming. But if my people... If I could get about 55 people to open your mouth for the next 30 seconds and shout the storm break. Shout. Tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, if the storm decides to show up anyway, it ain't going to hit this church. It's not going to hit my house. It's not going to affect anything that's got to do with me. If a storm is coming, it will pass over. Y'all don't like the way I'm talking. Tell your neighbor, not my house, not my job, not my family. Hallelujah. Get your Bibles. I got about shot. Get your Bibles. Go hand Go with that. It keeps going out. Go with me to Acts chapter. Acts chapter 3. I thank God I believe are the greatest pastors in the world. That is my pastors, Pastor Shamari and co-pastor Jackie White of Have Light Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. When you have Acts chapter 3, holler at your girl and say, I'm there. If you don't have it, say, wait on me. Hope those of you that are saying wait on me are not using on drugs. <laughs> it's not of God. You need to be apostolic. Amen. When you have it, jump up on your feet real fast. Let's honor the word. Acts chapter 3, look at verse number 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look! On us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but conjunction, junction, what is your function? Such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked. 
and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking. And all the people saw him praising. And all the people saw him walking. And all the people that passed him. All the people that passed him. He has now joined them. You, 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 you. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Father, in the name of Jesus. We praise you tonight. We thank you for life. We thank you for who you are, who you've been, and who you shall be. Father, we give you praise, God, that after this word tonight, a life shall be changed. Miracles are going to happen in this place. God, we thank you now that you are about to bless us with one miracle so big that we will never need another miracle as long as we live. God, I give you the praise now, Father. And the next portion of my prayer is only going to be for one group of people under the sound of my voice. The next portion of my prayer is for, for the praisers only. God, for every praiser under the sound of my voice, while they're praising you here, I ask you us to sing send a miracle to their address. God, while they're praising you here, I ask you to assassinate the assignment of every witch, every warlock, every Jezebel, every soothsayer, every python spirit, black magic, white magic, crystal of Mancy, spirit of Leviathan, in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you that while they're, you're, they're praising you here, Father, I ask you to bless them before their feet hit the exit door. And God, I'm asking you to only do it for the praiser. And if that praiser is standing beside a non-praiser, give that praiser double. And we'll forever give your name the glory. I said we'll forever give your name the glory. I said we'll forever give your name the glory. Because your name is Jesus. And we give you praise. Before you take your seat, before you take your seat, I want you to look at a neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, here's our subject. Say, neighbor, I'm not there anymore. This, this, this church of God in Christ so y'all do subtopics. And if I'm going to preach a subtopic, just holler at somebody behind you and say, here's our subtopic. This will be my last lift. Now, if I can get y'all to push me. My son is here. My son, I have two sons. And one of them is here. Reggie, wave at the people so they can see how handsome my baby. Stand up so they can see how handsome my baby is. That's my son. Spoiled rotten. This will be my last lift. I like uh, the opening of this particular text because if you look at chapter 3 and you jump to 17 through 26... 17 through 26 gives us an affirmation and a confirmation that it can happen today. That what is it? It is whatever you confess out of your mouth. It can happen today. Can you just testify to somebody on your row and say whatever it is, it can happen today. Now, if you push me, I'm going to have us out of here real quick and in a hurry, and we're going to get to the point real quick. But the Bible says that they went to pray, somebody, in the ninth hour. 
Not the third hour, not the second hour, but they went in the ninth hour. That is very, very, very important because in biblical meaning, it was the time that Jesus called out from the cross. When he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That is the moment when divinity and humanity was in a fight. That is the moment where the human and the man, the spirit, were in a war. That is the moment where Jesus, the man, began to ask God the Father, are you sure, I ain't got nobody saying nothing, that I'm supposed to be here for people that you're saying I'm supposed to die for. And them same folk are telling them to crucify me. Them same folk are sitting there scandalizing me. They're sitting there antagonizing me, torturing me, sitting there acting like I'm not doing nothing for them. Are you sure? I'm supposed to be on this cross of crucifixion. The word forsaken means, here it is, God, are you there? I don't know if anybody in the middle section has ever been in a point in the last month where you feel like you had to find out if God is even present. I know they say you are very present help in the time of trouble, but it seems like sometimes we get in dilemmas and situations where I can't seem to find God. Watch this. Listen for myself. I, I ain't got nobody saying nothing. I can find him for my neighbor. Hello. I can find him for the people next door, but I cannot seem to call on God for myself. Is there anybody that says I can pray for for you and he will answer but when it comes to me I got to fast I got to tarry I got to lay in the floor I got to slobber I got to call on the elders and that still don't work okay okay you ain't never been through nothing is, is there anybody like me that says I, I, watch this any prophets in the building just wave at me real quick uh, have you ever prophesied to everybody but yourself it seemed like God comes through for everybody in this season uh, but but me it's, 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 it's the hour of prayer and he was in a dilemma he was in a debate and uh, watch this the typical schedule for divine hours, watch this, divine hours follows a three-hour pattern. It's 6 a.m., 9 a.m., noon, 3 p.m., and 6 p.m. It's, it's the ninth hour or the mid-afternoon prayer. It is a fixed time of prayer of, of the divine office of almost all the traditional Christian uh, churches. It consists and mainly persists of intercessors. It, 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 there, did you not know that there are times when God stops to listen? You, you, didn't, you didn't hear what I said. This is why it's imperative that you know the strategies of heaven. I, I get tired of prophets prophesying, prophesying out of season and out of turn. I get tired of preachers preaching out of season and out of turn. I, I know you wrote your message for the year, but it is the, it is the, is it the timing of God. Praise and worship leaders got to know the timing of God. Musicians got to know the timing of God. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. Intercessors got to know the timing of God. I'm coming. I'm coming. Greeters got to know the timing of God. The deacon board got to know the timing of God. Everything is not going to happen in your time. Because the problem with time is time does not control God. It obeys him. God is so in control of time that he stepped into time, locked us into time, took himself out of time. And everything he did, he did it in that time. That way he could be an on-time God. Is anybody going to talk to me right now? I said, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you don't understand nothing else this year, you better know the timing of God. 
Because if you knew the timing of God, you would know that July is not the month to come to church and be cute. Because this is the month that a heaven is open. You ain't saying nothing to me. If you knew anything about the timing, if you knew anything about the timing of God, then you would have understood that June was when Rapha was on the hunt. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Oh my God. If you knew the timing of God, then you would know that August is when God releases divine strategies to entrepreneurs and businessmen and women. Is anybody going to talk to me? I said, look at your neighbor and say, know the time, know the time. The greatest enemy of time is witchcraft. And um, uh, our better witchcraft has the power to talk you out of where God sent you. And that, uh, that same witchcraft, Jalen, talks you into where people want you. I'm going to say that one more time. Witchcraft talks you out of where God wants you. And it is that same witchcraft that talks you into where people want you. This is why in this season, uh, you got to know the difference between help and hostage. You got to know the difference between a circle and surveillance. You, you got to know the difference between friends and fake friends. You, 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 you got to know the difference between covering and lids. I ain't got nobody saying nothing. You, 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 you got to know the difference between holy and unholy. You, you, you got to know the difference between clean and unclean. You, you got to know who's laying hands on you. You got to know who's praying for you and who's praying on you. You got to know who's prophesying to you and who's witchcraft and sorcery. You got to know who you in the company of. Somebody say, in this season. Watch, watch, watch the description of the scripture. The description of the scripture says, a certain man. Watch this, he has no identification. He, he has absolutely no identification. And the second problem with this is, he's not given a name, he's given a posture. Mm. Mm. He has no identity, and his only identity, man of God, is his condition. As a matter of fact, I know this don't happen in Memphis, Pastor Heath, but he's not given a name until he's healed. Good God from glory. Nobody knows who he is until he's better. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing that people won't identify you until your posture has changed, until you got better? I'm the same person. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me that you've been walking past all year long. And now... Push me, mother. Now you're going to act like. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. His name is Levi. God help me. And like most church folk, no, it don't happen here. But like most church folk, people only know you by the way they can identify you. Good God Almighty. And 90% of the time, woman of God, you get identified by your condition. You get identified, I'm, I'm getting ready to help you, by where they stopped. Mm. They, they didn't hear what I said all better. Watch this. They can only see you based on their capacity to think. Head of Asia, but tell your neighbor, slap them real good, wake them up and say, neighbor, I'm not that mad about how you see me because you can only see me. I'm coming based on how you see yourself. Ain't nobody saying nothing. You can't see me beyond where you see yourself. And if you see yourself broke, that's the only place you can see me. If you can see yourself burdened, that's the only way you can see me. God send me people. That can see the you. You're talking about share. Tell your neighbor, stop looking at me based on your eyes. I ain't got nobody saying nothing. You scared of your neighbor. What's wrong with y'all? I said, look at your neighbor square in the eye and say, neighbor, you need this.
vision correction. Because if you really knew where God was about to take me, if you knew where he was about to take me, if you knew what I was getting ready to step into, if you knew what God, I said, look at somebody. Can I speak to you for a second, sir? You don't have an identity crisis. The people looking at you do. Who is God trying to help? Tell your neighbor, I don't have an identity crisis. It's the people around me. And this year, if I don't get delivered from nothing else, I'm getting ready to get delivered from how you see me. Sound man, be good to me, please. Oh, don't take your seat yet. You're going to jump right back up. Because I want you to get delivered from the last me you met. God help me. I'm not that person anymore. And if you're going to get delivered, if you want to see where I'm going, here it is. Then you've got to get delivered from the ugly me you helped me be. Am I all right, first lady? Yeah. Because some of you are trapped on what you helped me become. I ain't got nobody saying nothing. Lord, glory. Can I give you a word? And I want you to take this with you the rest of the year. Look at somebody and say, let me help you out. I'm going to help you out. This going to help you out. If they will sin with you, then they will sin against you. Here's my problem, Emmanuel. My problem is, it's the same people, glory, hallelujah, that now has something to say. But look at your neighbor and tell them, I've been crazy. You just mad because now I'm crazy on you. I ain't got nobody saying nothing. Why is it okay that I act a fool until I act a fool on you? I need somebody that will stop me from destroying myself. I ain't got nobody saying nothing. Tell me the truth about myself. Tell me you anointed but you're nasty. Tell me you got to get gift but you need to get your character. Some of your biggest problems are the people that you hang with that allow you to destroy you. Do you not know that sometimes people benefit from your deficiency? Yeah. I am currently getting a PhD in both psychology and psychiatry at the same time. And uh, uh, I'm happy about it because, you know, I was alcoholic for 16 years. And so... Uh, and one thing we learned is, um, one, thing, one thing we're learning is about uh, the frontal lobe. And uh, it's the only part of the brain that, that you have full control of. Ain't nobody saying nothing. After it enters your frontal lobe, you no longer have control. Okay, you just missed what I said. The frontal lobe only works through the ear and eye gate. Okay, I'm trying to help somebody. The frontal lobe operates based on what is seen and what is heard. I ain't got nobody saying nothing to me. And most of the time, people have a nervous breakdown. Here it is, because of what they didn't stop. Good God from glory. And because, watch this, you become addicted to affirmation. And because you become addicted to affirmation, you need people. God, everybody, ain't nobody saying nothing. To tell you who you are. And when people stop telling you who you are, you go seek it from the user. God. So you will become somebody's tummy. I ain't got nobody saying nothing. In order to receive accolades and rewards. And this is how we become mentally impaired. There it is. 
because of who we're listening to. Yeah. And most of the time, what you are is who they're talking about, but they won't talk about the part they played in it. And then here's the big problem. The big problem, son, is that what you're talking about, you've never seen me get delivered from. And you're mad when I get delivered. And the reason you're mad when I get delivered because I'm no longer under, ain't nobody saying nothing, your deception and manipulation. Here's for 20 screamers, five runners, and eight jumpers. God said by this time tomorrow, you're about to be delivered from word curses. You're about to get delivered from what they said. You're about to get delivered from who tried to bring you down. You're about to get delivered from what is in your DNA. Watch this. The Bible says he is lame from the womb. He's lame from the womb. It's amazing that people will fault you for what you're born with. And they refuse to trace your struggle history. Everybody preaches about Jacob. And everybody got a problem with Jacob. And everybody called Jacob a liar, deceiver, manipulator. A liar. They called him a thief and a robber. But ain't none of y'all preached about his lying mama, Rebecca. Jacob was a liar because his mama told, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Oh, the parents just got quiet. I need every child to look this way. I, I, some of us are being... Some of us are being beat up, talked about, because of what we were born with. And y'all mamas and daddies need to go find your kids and repent. Okay, God, I ain't got nobody saying that. You done brought them to the altar, you done poured oil on them, but what you need to do is lay hands on them and say, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I command the spirit of me to come out of you in Jesus' name. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. No, no, no. You need to tell your neighbor, this ain't my fault. I act just like my mama. I act just like my crazy daddy. I'm crazy because it's in my DNA. Y'all quiet in the back. Is there anybody in here that can say, I'm crazy, my sister was crazy, my brother was crazy, because my mama was crazy. And if I keep searching, her mama was crazy, and her mama's mama was crazy. It's in my bloodline, but today. Tell them, don't blame me. Blame my daddy. You know why I was alcoholic? Because it's in my bloodline. I go, ain't nobody saying nothing. Y'all quiet. But today I deliver you from what's in your DNA. And here it is. The curse stops with you. Ain't nobody saying nothing. It ain't going to your children. It ain't going to your grandchildren. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I need you to look down your row and slap a good neighbor and say nothing. Neighbor, I just got delivered from, from every bloodline curse. I just got delivered. No, that was a good place to run. Every spirit of perversion just broke in here. Every characteristic that you got that is not like God, I command it broken. And whom the Son said. Watch this. He's born. He's born with a deficiency. I'm coming to get you in 11 minutes. He's born with a deficiency. And uh, the deficiency is so bad that it outweighs his identity. The Bible says he's lame from the womb. 
Here's my question. Who's given birth to you? Good God Almighty. If I can give you any advice. Because some of you are got, you're getting birthed out by dysfunction. Mm, God. <clears throat> I, I said this to somebody. I said, uh, I don't know if I could have been committed to Pastor Show for 11 years if I'd never seen him worship. I can't be connected to a pastor and a first lady that does not worship. No, no. I, I, can't, I can't be connected to leadership that always has to make a grand entrance. Y'all going to get mad at me tonight. I, I can't get connected to, 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 to a ministry. That, that, that Don't never lay in the floor. Lay on your face. You, 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 I don't never see you go through any type of deliverance. How can you preach me out of something that you're still bound by? And this boy had to sit by a gate ta, 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 because of what gave birth to him. Yeah, you got to figure out who you're connected to in this season. Who's carrying you? Are you giving birth to destiny or conditions? And then watch this. Uh, the Bible says he was lame. Now, I don't have a problem with the lame man. I got a problem with the gate. And if you give me 10 minutes, and let me find my section. For the next 10 minutes, I'm going to preach on the gate. Because my first issue with the gate is why is the gate closed at the temple? God have mercy. I'm trying to figure out, ain't nobody saying nothing, why he was able to lean on a gate. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. The gate is the entryway. If you look it up in the Hebraic term, it is the entryway that on the other side, watch this, is answers. You just miss what I said. The word gate means blocking answers. Y'all dismiss what I said. And I need to find out who are the gatekeepers at the church. Because the problem with the church is not the pastors. Y'all gonna get mad at me. But the problem with the church is those of you guarding the gate. Oh God, I'm getting ready to get kicked out of here. I said the problem with church is not the pulpit. The problem with the church is who's guarding the gates. And the reason, hey, kind of she undaya, the reason people are lame at the gate is because of the gatekeeper. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Because the gatekeeper ain't got the power you, to open the gate. And you act one way in front of leadership, but you a whole demon when they eat. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my she, I need you to look down your row and tell somebody on your row, beware of gatekeepers. Wrong neighbor, they got an attitude. I said, find somebody and say, beware of gatekeepers. But if I could preach to you for five minutes, I came to Temple of Deliverance to let 12 of y'all know, and a hundred of y'all in the back, I came to let you know God is about to expose every demonic gatekeeper. God is about to expose the witches at the gates. God is about to expose every Leviathan spirit, every Python spirit, and I command every witch, every warlock at the gate to die. Because, let me prove it, if the Hebraic definition of gate means answer on the other side, that means 
means. The answer had to walk in. You just miss what I say. You, you just, you just miss what I say. I, 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 I got a problem. I got a problem here because uh, my first problem, Pastor Heath, uh, my first problem, First Lady, is who carried this man to the gate? You mean to tell me, woman of God, you can get me to the gate, but you can't bring me in? And notice what the scripture says. The scripture says they send him with a cup. Because the reason some people won't take you to the altar because they're benefiting off your condition. I ain't got nobody saying nothing. Glory, hallelujah. Oh God, I should have ran right there. I said the reason some people won't take you to the altar is because they're benefiting off of you being lame. But if there's anybody in here like me, I need you to look down your row and say, if God don't give me nothing else this year, I need him to anoint me with who's carrying me. Anoint me with discernment. Let me see who's taking me. This will be the last year. I will be anybody's condition. You, you, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Don't sit down, mother. Because my next problem is the name of the place. They set him in a gate called Beautiful. How dare you, you demon, make my condition look pretty. No, no, no. I need you to tell somebody with the Holy Ghost, there's nothing pretty about my pain. Is that my musician? Hey, I said, tell, tell somebody on your road, there's nothing pretty about my pain. I, I don't like who you're talking to. They got an attitude. I said, find somebody on your road and say, neighbor, there's nothing, there's nothing pretty about my pain. Watch this. Watch. Y'all about to be messed up because I was. The Bible says, uh, oh my God, I got a lot to preach, but the Bible says, oh, uh, this is right before the crucifixion. You about to lose it. Uh, Y'all might want to scoot over. Scoot over some. You, you, this is right before the crucifixion. And Jesus, the Bible says, and they, the Bible says, Jesus would go into the temple three times a day to pray right before the crucifixion. Y'all just missed what I said. I got a question. If Jesus is going into the temple three times a day to pray, how are you still lame? They miss what I just said. How many times has your answer walked right past you? And you can't recognize your answer because you're addicted to a cup. Ain't nobody saying nothing. I okay, okay. I, You can't get delivered because you'd rather have your cup filled than your soul healed. Who, who is God tell, talking to? Tell your neighbor if my soul get right, I can fill my own cup. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. I said, tell somebody on your road, don't worry about my cup. Help me with my soul. Wait, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, don't, don't bless me to blind me, don't bless me to blind me, no, no, watch this, the Bible says, Peter, two men, Peter and John, walked in, and they stopped, and uh, he said, hey, can I have some change, and uh, Peter, if I can paraphrase and parenthetically inject, Peter said, I got change. A change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Watch what the Bible says. The Bible says, Peter fastens his eyes upon the lame man. And uh, Peter says to the lame man, look on us. You just missed what I said. Peter didn't say, what else do you need? Peter said, God help me. Peter said, look on us. Pause for the call. Perhaps the reason they can't get a kill is because they can't look at you. Because when they see you, they don't see God. God help me in here. Has somebody missed their deliverance because you are not the right person? I ain't got nobody saying nothing. Okay, y'all mad at me. Wait. The problem with church folk is we have replaced power with protocol. I'm getting ready to get in so much trouble. Good God from glory. We have replaced the power and the moves of God with an itinerary. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. But if it's on the praise and worship leader, let the praise and worship leader have it. If it's on the musician, let the musician have it. Who's got the power to bring you out? We rushing everybody. I can recall a Sunday when I was at my church and I, my pastor looking at me and said, uh, it ain't on me. You just missed what I said. Wasn't scheduled to preach. But dad said, it ain't on me, daughter. It's on you. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. I can remember when I did a revival in New York City, and the revival was over, and, uh, and Asia, Dr. Bynum was there, and she was supposed to preach the next night. Dr. Bynum said to the pastor, it ain't on me. It's still on the prophet. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Are you so addicted to your title that you can't admit with the glory of deliverance ain't on you? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whoever's got my answer, if it's the girl in the drive through at McDonald's, give her the microphone. I just want to know. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Well, I feel like preaching now. I said, look at your neighbor and grab your neighbor by the hand. Shake your neighbor. Shake him real, real good. I said, shake your neighbor. Shake him real, real good. And say, neighbor, I want to know, do you have it? I want to know, are you my answer? I want to know, is deliverance in your belly? I want to know, is my miracle in your belly? I want to know who is the one that's going to bring me out. Who is the one that's going to lift me up? Who is the one that's going to heal my body? Ask your neighbor. Do you have it? Do you have it? I'm not worried about a title. I'm not worried about certificates. I'm not worried about a collar. I'm not worried about order. I'm not worried about protocol. I just want to know who's got it. I just want to know where's my answer. I just want to know who's got the Holy Ghost. Who's got the power to deliver me. Who's got the power to help Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, be careful how you handle me. I just might be the one that God uses to bring you out. Your neighbor ain't talking. I said, find your neighbor, grab them good, and say, neighbor, be careful what you say about me. Because my answer or your answer might be in my mouth. I said, look down your row and say, neighbor, you better watch out because I'm about 
to send the power down the whole road. I'm about to send the angels on assignment. I'm about to help you get up from there. I'm about to help you get delivered. I said, grab your neighbor by the hand. Pull your neighbor. Shake them, shake them and rock them, rock them and shake them and say, neighbor, not only are you going to get delivered, but your son is about to be delivered. Your daughter is about to be delivered. Your children, children are about to be delivered. I say it, is there anybody that says, ah, ah. I said, look at somebody and tell them the power's in me. Look on me. The power's in me. And say, neighbor, I got one more thing to tell you. This time, when you come out, this will be your last lift. This will be the last time you in this condition and the enemies you see today, you will see no more. Somebody to say, neighbor, God is about to bring you out. God is about to pull you out. And I know you thought he was going to do it through the priest, but he's about to use me. He's about to use me. He's about to use me. The delivery power is in your hands. The healing power is in your hands. The breaking power is in your hands. Grab somebody, pat them on the back, and say, neighbor, you're about to come out. You're about to come out. You're about to come out. You're about. Some trust in horses, some 
uh, trust in chariots, but we will call on uh, the name uh, of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in, and they, I said they, I said they are saved. I need about a hundred people. Open your mouth and shout Jesus. Because it's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. We got the victory. Tell me who can stand me for us when we call on that great name. What's his name? 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 name? Tell your neighbor the miracles in me. The deliverance is in me. The power is in me. The breakthroughs in me. It's in me. I'm not there anymore. I'm, I'm not the person you've been walking past. I need to be able to look on somebody. Now watch this before you sit down. I got to go. My pastor teaches me order. And I got to go. And uh, I want you to watch this. Um, the Bible says, he ran into the temple, walked in the temple rather, Leaping and dancing. Which tells me, Pastor, that when God does a miracle, the evidence that he did it is in your praise. Maybe the reason some people don't believe your God is because nothing about your posture has changed. Wait, 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 nephew, wait. Watch this. The Lord told me when I got in the back, I was waiting on my, one of my, my daughter had my pens. So I was waiting on my pens and uh, I walked over to the mirror, a mirror in the office. I walked over to the mirror, and God said, Val, be very careful tonight what comes out of your mouth because you got a changing anointing in your mouth. You can change some. He, he told me to release three words in this temple tonight. And this might not be for everybody, but it's, but it's for the right somebody. I ain't going to pump you. James, we're we not going to do nothing special. You, you're going to play based on how they respond. The three words are reveal, release, restore. Now wait, the first thing he's going to do, now watch this, hold on. Man of God, the reason maybe they didn't respond because I got to give you the order. He's going to reveal to you what's stopping it by tomorrow. He's going to release it 
Oh, I'm sorry. He already did. Oh. Uh. Oh, my shit. see it till you thank him. Did, did, okay. Wait, I, I, I gotta go because I'm, 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 I'm an orderly person. I gotta go. But watch this. Uh, is there somebody in this room? Can I prophesy? Is there somebody in this room uh, that knows a Charles? Okay, several of y'all. He's somebody's brother. Charles is your brother. Come here, sweetheart. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. They got enough security around here, I'm all right. Uh, First Lady, can I go down the steps? Am I allowed to go down? Okay, because uh, when I heard the name Charles, I saw me. And uh, I drank for 16 years. One day I went to drink, and it made me sick as a dog. And I never wanted that feeling. When I lay hands on you, I'm going to put my hands on your back. And when I touch you, your brother Charles is going to vomit up every spirit of alcoholism by the power of the Holy Ghost. Y'all don't know how to... Now see... Wait, some mother in here should have went crazy. Because if you got a son that's an alcoholic, if you got a son that's a drug addict, wait, who, who, whose son is, is in jail? Don't be embarrassed. Yours? Uh, just stay in your seat. And he's guilty. But Jesus did not let him go to jail because he's guilty. He let him go to jail so he can get delivered. If I be a prophet of God by November the 13th, your son is coming out of jail, and he's coming out of jail delivered. I don't care what the judge said. Okay, y'all don't know how to shout. That thing is sitting on me. Anybody know a Tony? Tony. Y'all 
You know Tony? That's your brother? Who's your Tony? Huh? I can't hear you. Your brother? Who's your Tony? Your husband? I'm looking for you. Um, Y'all own a business? Okay. Don't you do own a business? Tony run the business? $1.45 million. Uh, I don't know what this means, but you will. Tony's not going to have to go to court for who tried to rob him. Somebody tried to steal something from you all. And this person's going to run back and repent with a check. Wait. I don't know what this means, but the Lord said to tell her, to tell Tony, I'm going to make up the difference for the month of June, July, and August of, uh, of 22. Last thing. Scoot over Arvetta, because she, she's going to lose it if, 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 if I'm a real prophet. The Lord said to tell you, go look again. I got to go. Shirley or Cheryl? Your mom, where is she? She's watching me right now. She can hear me. What's going on in her body? Swole? Okay. To, to, when she walks, it feel like pin and needle. Right now, fluid is leaving your body. Zoom in. Shirley, I declare that right now your body is being healed. Right, ko lebet shit ta dan de kavat sunde. Loba di di ashat ta da da ba kon se da ba hai. Ye da ba kandri shi ba da ba hai. Shirley, by the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, daughter, what's what's her name? Brian. Oh, that's Brian. Brian, cancel the funeral plans. <laughs> You've been struggling with anxiety because you keep rehearsing a conversation with your mother that y'all had sometime in the last seven months. And your mom's been trying to prepare you. But I heard the Lord say, tell her like the prophet Isaiah told Hezekiah, I'm going to add years to your life. I gotta go. I'm going after this. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Rafa is in this room. There is deliverance in this room. Right now, lift your hands. For purposes of protocol, I can't really lay hands on you like I want to. But I, I want to. I can. Oh. Put your hands down. Is there a Smith family in here? Smiths? I can't, I can't hear her. Her maiden name is Smith. You're Smith? You're an actual Smith. Is your family here? Who else is with you? Do you have a daughter? Do you have a daughter, though? 
What did she say? <laughs> Your daughter just came back to God today. Do you know why I asked for the Smith family? I asked for the Smith family because God said to tell you this is your season of get it back. Uh, I don't know why they're doing that patty cake clapping. I don't understand that. But let me say this. Wait. Let me say this to you. Do you believe in pro prophecy? Do you believe I'm a prophet? I can't stand carnal prophets. Can't stand them. Can't stand prophets only see houses and cars. So I rarely do that. But when I do it, you can put your life on it. If I be a prophet of God, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, your bedroom will be on the bottom floor like you want it. And I want you to go to the furniture store and find that tan sectional that you've been wanting. Hit it, man, and then I don't know what this is about, but I see you driving a Cadillac. That's what you want? It's okay, breathe. No, that's, God is very specific. Okay? Month of August mean anything to you? What? August is the month your brother got murdered. Your brother, God said, tell her she's going to smile again in August. Now, there are four people in this building right now that are in the process of house hunting. Had they went crazy for you, they would have gotten the houses by the end of July. Stop. There is a release of keys that just fell in this building. God just dropped. Ho! Ho! I said, the Lord just released keys in this building. You better shout. You can go sit out. You better shout like it's a, like you're about to get it. Shout! Shout like it's coming! Shout like it's coming! Shout! Come on, see you at the ball scene. Come on, see you at the ball scene. Let's head to the ball scene. Shout! Hey! 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 Come on, see you! Let's head to the ball scene. Head to the ball scene. Come on, see you at the ball scene.
What's your name? Augusta. Your name is Augusta. Wait a minute, don't tell me nothing else. When I laid hands on your chest, I heard one word, settlement. I heard settlement. I heard settlement. And the, oh, and the Lord said to tell you, I'm gonna go back and give them four years worth of pay. And everything you gave, ha, 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 hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. somebody to open your mouth. I said open your mouth. I said open your mouth. I said open your mouth. I, hey. Watch this. Watch this. 
Watch this. Watch this. You can go. I'm good. Watch this. Yes, you are. I don't know, Pastor, First Lady, what you prayed for for this service. However, there is literally a healing virtue in this room. Wait, 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 wait. Don't clap. Because I need to describe to you what this is going to look like. Some of you are going to go home tonight and suddenly feel sick to your stomach. And you're going to vomit the you're going to vomit the infirmity up. No, 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 no. You you don't hear what I'm saying. There's three of y'all that have to go take tests this week. And the doctor isn't going to find anything. Did you hear what God said? And come down. I, when I, I don't lay hands suddenly. I heard the Lord say there is a healing virtue in this room. I don't know what happens in this room, but I feel the power of prayer in this room. I, I, I feel intercession. And, and, and I'm, I'm feeling it right up and through here. I feel heavy intercession. And the Lord said, the prayers of the righteous just availed much. You praying for me, sis? I heard the Lord say, y'all keep asking God, I, I hope I'm not out of order, to send old power in here. But the Lord said, I behold, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. And now it shall spring forth. You didn't hear what I said. There's a new glory that just dropped in here. And I don't know where the pastor is, but there's a new weight that just sat on the man of God. There's a new order that just sat on the pastor. There's a new oil that just sat. Are you the pastor? May I? Now wait, 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 wait. Where is it? Come here, first lady. Because when I lay hands on this man, it's getting ready to be a dangerous anointing. That two faced people will be exposed. Backstabbers will be exposed. You can't be on the committee and be stabbing him in the back. You will drop dead. You better hear me. There's a new weight that's getting ready to sit on this man. That his shadow, his very shadow are going to open up blinded eyes. His very shadow he will be known as the bishop that heals. The, 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 the different, I don't know how y'all do it in, in Church of God in Christ, but the different organizations, we call it councils. The different organizations will call this man of God to come to the service just to lay hands. If I be a prophet of God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Your next four Sundays will be healing Sunday. God is about to send them from the hospital. God is about to send dead bodies to your services. And they're about to raise from the dead. You don't like the way I'm talking. But there's a power that 
just dropped on this man. And I'm very, I'm very careful about touching him. And I got to say this to you. But God is about to give you permission to speak your dreams. And the dreams you've been having. You're a governmental prophet. Y'all don't like the way I'm talking. You see systems. Ain't nobody saying nothing. And meetings. And God is about to give you the gavel. And you're about to open your mouth and say, Court adjourned. I ain't got nobody's hope. nephew wait you got 30 seconds to become a recipient of what God just dropped on your pastor and your first lady you didn't hear what I said those that praise will be the first recipients of what he's walking in this church is about to see new money new members new I gotta go get my stuff. I gotta go. But man of God, pastor, the Lord said to tell you, you heard well. You heard well. You are headed in the right direction. You have to hear from God in this season. And the board, I don't know who this is. I've never been to this church. I've never met them. Hold on. One thing my pastor does not allow me to do is look at flyers. So all that DMing and inboxing y'all be doing, y'all talking to my staff. You're not talking to me. 
I'm not allowed to look at flyers. That's why I, I have yet to call their name because I don't know their last name. I don't, don't know he's the pastor because I've never seen him. They had to tell me she was the first lady. I don't know. But this is the season where your staff and your board have got to trust what you're hearing. Because God is speaking to you. And here's for Temple of Deliverance. For those that will catch it, revival just hit this church. I said revival! Revival! Revival!
Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. While the anointing is still high and heavy in this place, I'm going to ask you that know that the Lord has spoken to you. I know you've given your offering, but I'm going to ask you to lay, bring your offering and lay it on the altar because we know that our blessing is by faith and by action. So please bring your offering, whatever the Lord placed on your heart, whatever the Lord placed on your heart, whatever the Lord places on your heart, whatever the Lord places on your heart. And those of you that don't carry cash like I don't, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You may share. Bishop Milton R. Hawkins. 
Jesus is the shepherd. Come on, let's give God some praise and glory in this. Come on, let's really praise God. Let's really lift our voices and give God the praise. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Listen, remain standing because I'm not going to be long. We're getting ready to dismiss. When we've had a service like this, we dare not do unnecessary talking and desecrate what we've already received. The Spirit of the Lord has met us mightily. And if you're not saved, if you're in a backslidden state right now, just raise your hand. I will pray for you if you're not saved, if you're in a backslidden state. If everyone in this room is saved, we thank God for the house of saved folks. Thank God for the church. Tremendous prophetic word tonight from this woman of God. How blessed we were. Did not our hearts burn while she spake the word of God in such a great way. Father, we thank you tonight for your presence, for your spirit. We thank you for the first lady of this church, your daughter and my wife. Lady Catherine Crawford Hawkins. You have birthed in her ministry for the women's department, and we thank you for the gift of God in her. Thank you, Lord, for what our eyes have beheld and our ears have heard. Thank you for the anointed gift of Psalmist Figueroa Cooper. Thank you for the anointed word tonight from this woman of God. Oh, God, we pray now that as we leave this place that you would go with us, that you would stay the hand of death and let every prophetic word that she uttered tonight come to pass, that we may come back and testify what a mighty God we serve. Thank you for the victory now. It is so, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And the people of God said, Amen. God bless you.